For many of years, the only way to break into the mainstream Australian hip-hop scene was to get signed to a record label and get played on regular rotation on Triple J. This seemed to be the blueprint for nearly every artist who managed to make a decent career out of hip-hop. You had acts like Illy, Draft, Muffin Plutonic and 360 successfully follow this formula and go on to have great careers. You either signed to Elephant Tracks or Obese Records, got played on Triple J and get added to festival lineups all across Australia. And shout out to all the acts that have managed to follow this blueprint. This is no hate, I'm a big fan of all those artists. But things were about to change forever when a young MC from Campbelltown came along by the name of Cursor. <laughs> Cursor first started dropping mixtapes around 2009 and it was labelled Street or Gutter Rap. Telling us about the raw and honest lifestyle he lives in southwest Sydney and mainstream Australia wasn't ready to hear it. And before Cursor, we had some Sydney street rappers holding it down on a much smaller scale, the likes of Forte, Enter, Schemo, Sky High, and even Deathwish Cast back in the day. Cursor first started getting his buzz through the battle scene, battling the likes of Greeley, J Legend, and of course the legendary 360 battle. From here, his name started to ring throughout Australia being labelled as a lad or esche, which is what most of the suburban Australia would call him because they haven't witnessed the reality of some of the places in southwest Sydney. And while most mainstream rappers at the time were respectively rapping about more PG topics like barbecue rap and drinking with their mates, Cursor brought a more aggressive style rapping about drugs, violence and being cocky on the mic. <laughs> what do you think it was that made you so different and people were just not jumping on the cursor train like they hadn't heard the lower class of west mm. sydney southwest sydney yet and like mm. i was one of the first to do that and they were used to like rappers not taking anything away from other artists but at the time they were like you know rapping about the rsl club or yeah having a barbecue or something and then here i come talking about what I was talking about, it was just to be like, ooh, yeah. shut that out. Yeah, out. okay. And now it's blown up. Yeah. His music was picking up more and more momentum and his debut album, The Nebulizer, was quickly approaching. He was all independent but had distribution through Obese Records. And like many of his peers, he would drop singles and just assume Triple J would pick them up and add them to rotation, but the call never came. To be fair, some of his tracks off his first album aren't too radio friendly, but throughout the rest of his career, you could have played three or four off each album. He did once head into Triple J studio with the legendary Howler Takefu for a freestyle with the likes of Dielectrics, Thundamentals and DJ Mathematics. Then he dropped his second album, No Rest for the Sickest, and hit number one on the Australian album Aria Charts. On top of that, a number one DVD and a sold out tour all whilst independent. His album hit number one yet he still wasn't getting recognised by Aria whatsoever. He wasn't nominated for an award when many of his peers were getting recognition yet he was playing bigger shows and selling more albums than most of them and still got shown no love whatsoever from radio stations like Triple J and Nova. Even most of the other artists in the scenes besides a few weren't vibing with Cursor at all because his industry had basically blackboard him. I think um, Triple J and all media have just been told, just ignore him. Yeah. Just, yeah. just stop. There was an incident 2015 when I released Next Step. Yeah. They contacted um, a current affair or someone like that, contacted one of them. W- yeah, Warner officers, like the officers <laughs> there, and said, because um, oh, I had in stores coming up, in store signings, and they said yeah. someone might rock up with a camera. I don't know why they gave the heads up and that. I was kind of spewing they didn't show up. <laughs> I was just going to wave my CD, like, buy this. <laughs> <laughs> He now started to use being blackboard from the industry in his favour. He started building relationship with his fan through social media, which many artists weren't doing back then around the time of 2013, and letting the rest of the industry know what his thoughts were about being labelled as an industry misfit. He would diss Triple J and the rest of the industry through many songs and even diss them at the shows. It also gave him plenty of content to write about. This turned him into an underdog and a lot of Australia were getting behind the curse movement where everything he touched would turn to gold. Although he still had plenty of haters, he even had Tracy Grimshaw and A Current Affair threaten to rock up to an in-store meet and greet Cursor was hosting because they weren't happy with the content of his music which is just laughable when you look back. All Cursor was planning to do is use it as free publicity. Um, 
It was pretty much, you had to be on Triple J to make it. It was like, because I was on Obese Records, which were in Melbourne, and all of their artists, even Distro, everyone was getting played there, and for some reason I wasn't. And I was doing bigger numbers, like, everywhere than everyone, and they just flat out fucking refused to. And Obese were telling me, nah, then they're, they're not going to play it. And I was like, okay, they're fucking turning the blind eye here. And it went on for years. I went, got Distro through Warner, still nothing changed. And now recently it's changed, and it's like, no, nah, fuck that. Yeah. You, you didn't want to do it back then, don't jump on board now. I know Cursor has said he definitely didn't find it easy not having the machine behind him and could have easily called it quits early on in his career. But he dug deep and found a way to turn all this negative into a positive. He continued to drop albums and they continued to hit number one and Aria kept on ignoring him. He finally got nominated for an Aria in 2017 for his album Engraved in the Game and I've heard Cursor say himself it's not his best album. I went through the list of the ARI awards over the last 10 years and to be honest and fair without mentioning other artists, I think Cursor deserves at least two for best urban album in 2015 and 2018. Even now that CDs are out of fashion, Cursor continues to sell them because of the relationship he has built with his fans over the past decade. All his merch sells out instantly. He even sold out of a range of Cursor bras and g-strings. Name another rapper that has that sort of power in the game. He was doing so many numbers that Warner literally were forced to come at him and offer him his own label, which is ABK Records. He even wore Nordica so much they had no choice but to cut a deal with him. What he was rapping about back in 2010 is literally the trending topic today and people are getting deals out of it and making a career out of it. He's inspired a generation of new artists to not worry about a label or radio airplay but to do it yourself and build a brand around your name. Without Cursor, I don't think we would have the likes of Rops One and Chillin' It being as big as they are and all independent. It's impossible to not respect this man's hustle. He's arguably the most influential rapper this country has ever seen. The Curse effect is real, the man is not lying. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, comment and share. It all helps. Thanks for watching.